Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. Why you say? Because I just hit record on the video. This is what You're happens welcome. when we had a whole we had a whole conversation. <laughs> yeah, we did. It wasn't much, but it was shout a conversation. Out, shout out to our sponsor, one of our sponsors, Monster <laughs> Energy. Monster Energy, the good folks. They get a double up. The, the good folks over at Monster Energy. Thank you for supporting the program. We truly appreciate it. And these we things do. really work. People ask, do you really drink that? Yes, I really drink it. I have a whole monster fridge in my garage. I'm outside. Saif had, a bir- Saif had a birthday festivity the other day, and he only allowed us to drink monster the whole yeah, birthday, that's... no matter. <laughs> people would say they, they'd go to go to the fridge looking for a beer they'd open the fridge and just be monsters and they go no well i had i had there was some coronas but i poured them out and poured monster into them <laughs> <laughs> i want everyone to know i want everyone to know uh two things one yes we are delaying getting to the topic of the uh of the episode today inevitable we do it. and and number two uh i did get to see sife's record shelves in person it was yeah really an experience man your your guy really he it's really really nice that that setup there is what do you what do you think it's clean it's clean very clean it's that room is very because i've seen better i've seen better record setups record collection setups like people that put fifty thousand dollars into building custom shelves you know what i mean with the wood and these the shelves down here clean they do the job. Black. They do the black job. Black shelves. Black. Um. You know the sides. It's clean. I did a couple of custom customizations. I like it. So, don't know if anybody saw the news over the last week or so. Um, Drake. Lot. Well, we Drake. should do some stuff with Drake. A lot of stuff with Drake and Rick Ross and. Uh, and G. <laughs> Although I got to tell you, <laughs> I'm like, first of all, okay. What? No, you go. No, the fucking Drake. I read a headline. It was like, Rick Ross accuses Drake of getting a nose job. Drake accuses Rick Ross of using weight loss drugs. Yeah. That's not even a diss. That, yeah. We got, we on it. What are you talking about? Leave him, leave him alone, man. Wait, which way do you mean? Do you mean both ways? No, or just weight Ross? loss drug. Yeah. That's like, like a thing on, now. Man. Like Everybody's on some kind of weight loss thing. Yeah. Come on, man. Ross got thin. But is like, is that the do? point now? Is that the point now where people are bragging about it? Like, yo, I'm on that Ozempic. I'm on that, I'm on that uh whatever the other one is. And then uh that's not even like people don't even hide it no more. It's like a thing. That yeah, wasn't a was good at, diss. That was a that first, was a fat was, guy, a fat guy joke that did not land, Drake. Well, but remember, he's also dealing Drake is in the process of getting the obligatory biracial light skin just being called white boy jokes too so <laughs> white boy is hilarious white boy is because be- as da- as dave Chappelle says drake's father is a <laughs> <laughs> what was so you think it's funny that you to call him white boy yes to straight up call him white boy that's yeah, a good as, as- that's a good subliminal that's a, it's it's what's the opposite of subliminal it's subliminal it's liminal. <laughs> it's liminal. It's a liminal diss, but also subliminal. I want to ask a question to everyone listening to One Up this week, though. Is everybody who jumped in the beef late kind of weak? Like, like if you're not Drake, obviously Kendrick, Future, or Metro, they're the ones who were initially involved. No, but this is. The, oh, I'm sorry. Finish your question. But no, no. But hear me out. But hear me out. Is it weak, though, if you're someone else who had issues with Drake and are now, like, you watched and you're like, oh, wait, everyone's jumping in? <laughs> I'm jumping in. Is that no. weak? No. It's not it's weak. Not? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you what's happening with everyone. Everyone is going, see, I told you that guy's like that. See? Like, it's like you you didn't know other people felt that way. And it was like, I've been saying this. I've been saying this. Push her, push her somewhere, sitting back eating popcorn. Push her on his couch like, oh, oh, oh look at this. <laughs> what yeah, do we exactly. have here? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> look, oh, oh, he, oh, he's in it too. Oh, look at your man. 
So it's like it's come to a a culmination, if you will. People are going, but you I told you he was but, like that. But you don't. But you don't think that's still a little weak to them? Be like, if you thought it and you already were like that, then you should have just gone for it. Um. Yes. Yes. I agree. I understand what you're saying there. And yes, I agree. You know, you're watching. Right, I'm you're explaining going, mm-hmm. explaining why it's happening. You're saying it shouldn't have happened. Like I'm you describing what it looks like. Because a lot of people bringing up old beef. You mm-hmm. had your shot. When the when your shit happened, why didn't you say anything then? Am I weird though that I'm just like not that into this? Like, is it a matter of I just got older and so I shouldn't care as much, or is it like? not that dope or or like am i, I think it's I, don't know. I think it's i think it's both i think it's both we are older um you know there's a video this comedian made um it said he goes you know one video was like it didn't he didn't even realize it was a diss someone had he had to watch a youtube video on how kendrick was dissing drake and j cole and then he makes another video where he's sitting in his car and he goes this is how long it took me to tell Nas was dissing jay-z and then Ether starts like, then, then, fuck Jay Z. He's like, yep, that's right there. That's it. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no trying to figure it out. There's no trying to figure it out. Then, then, fuck Jay Z. Okay, we well, know what this song is about. <laughs> by the way, I got to tell you, that's a really fair point. That's a really, Yo. really fair point. And then, like, the 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 level of sub you got to really know what's going so maybe it is an older thing maybe these kids know all these little things that happen and these disses make sense but otherwise they're just like i mean mind you i'm telling you right now drake drake knows how to fucking make a record like he's flowing on that record delivery wise right Oh, yeah, now, yeah, I don't sure. know. I technically don't know all the shit he's saying, but I'm no. he, he he got them the one bar raps that like it's punchy. It's like I don't know what the fuck he's talking about all the way through, but I know he is delivering it in a spectacular way. Yeah, no, he sounds which, good. Um, which is the entertainment factor of Drake, where you could not you could be a white girl from Minnesota. 13 years old and that record and it just sounds good without all the shit that what it means just sounds good and that, that's, well, that's an aspect what makes that his, people that's what makes his disc records dope um yeah. is that people can digest them but yeah i don't know man there's something about all of them like kendrick's verse i wasn't that into uh drake's response no. is good but i didn't spend much time think about thinking about it the ross record yeah like i don't know that one was pretty damn direct and i still i still wasn't that into it no nah, no nah, oh. man it's like i don't know we come from the bridges over you know what i mean like but i mean, but from- I mean like it, it, I, I don't want to be it's not because i feel like this, these aren't disc records i'll show you what a disc record is i'm just <laughs> not yeah maybe it's that like the source of it like so much of the it seems like the Drake Future stuff is based in like pillow talk stuff with a woman, yeah. you know? Because all these dudes, and with Ross, there's stuff too. Because all of you weirdos fuck with like the same five girls. No, I was you know talking about I mean? that with somebody the other day. Like, yo, listen, you go, you all go to the same parties, the same clubs, the same places, and you're all around the same. Why do y'all all want the same girl? These girls that are. That fuck ball players and rappers all the why do you want them? I, I, I don't I, like, want them. Way, I don't want any way, of those chicks. I by the way, half of them, they're created in a lab. Like they're not even and there's and meanwhile, you could go be with the hottest it, regular girl ever. But you know, hot, you know this type it's, it's convenient. It's it's very you don't want to have to date someone who requires you to do things that dating someone does and women who frankly have self-respect and don't kind of spend their time moving around hoping to sleep with people like that they have other standards like meet my family and i have responsibilities and i can't just drop my life for you they want people who are right they want professional basically professional side chick professional chick who's just there 
because it's valuable. Can, can can spend the whole day with you, be in the studio with you, get on a private jet at a at a moment's notice and go somewhere with you. Yeah, okay, I see that part. That's got to be the whole thing. And I, and because, I guess but there's those also, are limited. There's also the competitive. There's also the competitive part. Like, why does he get that girl? Yeah, I got more money than him, but why does he get that? I want that girl. That's it's a crazy way to it's a it's, it's a crazy, crazy way to think. It's crazy, but they're living crazy, crazy lives. I mean, listen, Drake, Drake and, how- and Ross are both on a path to being billionaires. Yeah, they're both on a path to being billionaires. So it's a crazy life. I don't identify with it. I don't. Maybe that's part. It just like feels far removed from what interests me or something. Now, Kendrick could. I will say this. Kendrick, I really do believe, gave like a love tap on that future record. I don't think he really went for it. I I think if Kendrick really goes for it, it will probably pique my interest in a real way. Like if Kendrick goes for it. Like he comes back on some like, an, like way, an Eminem, like an Eminem type disc record. That because like, by the way, why did Drake have to mention Kendrick's wife, bro? Why does Drake, Drake mention such say? weird stuff? Something about a bodyguard like Whitney, and that's Kendrick's wife's name. Her name is Whitney. Yeah. And then the movie, like he's referencing the movie Bodyguard. So what he's saying? That's right. She's, she's knocking down her bodyguard. I just think it's a play on the name of the movie. Right. Because because Whitney's in the movie. But maybe. I mean, who knows? Either way, though, listen, Drizzy, I love you. But when you wonder why that people get, like, a little weird with you, one of the things that I throw in is you're having, like, a back and forth on rap. Kendrick kept all his shit to rap. You went right to talking about his wife. Yeah. Like Kendrick I mean, kept it. That is really, how Jay Z. That's how Jay Z lost the the Nas battle. To, you know what, Sife? It's a great point. Yeah. You, you don't need to. You could. Yeah, because you're right. Nas did a whole thing, a whole record on Jay, and never talked about his family. Did he? I don't think so. Rockefeller family. His, right. But, like, he didn't go into your girl this or that. And the second Jay took that misstep on Super Ugly, it just knew. It ended up not working out. Yeah. And it's just something to keep an eye on. Yeah. Yeah, We'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on the situation, and we'll let you know a week after it happens. (laughs) Here's what you can count on with Juan (laughs) App. When the big news happens... We're here a week later to digest it and talk about it with you. Okay, so Rory and Maul. I understand Maul's... We're we're just going to get to everything except... Real quick, real quick. Rory and Maul. I understand Maul's point. Was Rory trying to go at me? Was he trying to diss me? What what did Rory say? I listened. I didn't hear that. He said... He said... uh, he said one thing. He said, "Why you, why you?" He said, "Why you dissing somebody? This Sife. And then, and then Rory jumped in with the, "We're talking passion. We can't talk passionately about hip hop." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there why was a little thing he said. There was a little thing he said in there where it was like, "Sife this, Sife that." Well, I don't, I don't care. But I'm just saying. I'm just wondering. No, I was he well, defending me or me. going at me? Well, I think I don't think either really, but Rory did call me the day of their podcast to like let me know and be like, "Hey, we had a conversation about you guys. We started the podcast with it. I just want to let you know it was it was respectful, but it was this that." I said, "Rory, listen, man, thank you. The fact yeah, that you guys have you. a popping podcast and you talked about us, thank you, thank, thank you. you. That we appreciate that because <laughs> we could siphon. I can literally say whatever we want. No one says shit back. So yeah. thank you, Rory. <laughs> how'd, you, how'd, you hear, how'd you hear it? How'd you hear about it? <laughs> how'd you, how'd you, how'd you listen? No, because how'd you know you, what it is. Rory, Rory's a real old school one app at Rory still listens. Rory still no, listens to one. App. I know. I, I, real, I, I get it. I know. And uh, um, no, I, 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 mind I, I, you, I, I, I just want to say this. I don't listen to hip hop podcasts, but I listened to that clip because it was about us. And I was like, yo, these guys got a good podcast. These guys got a good show. No, it came in. The show starts with the show start. They they 
They started the show with the Mr. C Biggie freestyle music, which was a nice little tribute. Yep. They care. No, listen, Rory and Maul, they yeah. they are into they are actually sort of the most direct descendants of our show when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, really good. I don't mind you, Funny, I hip hop. You know, I hope, you oh. know, I hope again, I hope they don't take it as disrespect. I was giving my opinion about um about Maul's opinion. And uh now the shit has gone fucking double, triple times crazier. But I meant no Even disrespect personally. Um huh? Well, no, ever since then, ever now since that conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. happened, the, the beef is ten times fold over. But but um the funniest thing is they said something about they made it they sort of took it as like almost offensive that you were like you should go see a Jewish lady. I was like, no, that Jewish part was show, a, Jewish lady. that part was a joke. That part was just no, saying, go it see wasn't a joke. It wasn't a joke. You know why? Uh, I'm talking why? about one specific Jewish lady who was my therapist. Oh, who oh okay, I have okay. sent. Maybe I should have said you should go. You should go see my old Jewish lady, and she's not old, right? Um, but the reason why I said that is because I have sent many people to see my therapist over the year, over the last 10 years. And my therapist loves me for it. And other people have thanked me for it. And, and I'm talking about some celebs, some celebs. So, Oh, you, you sent her some, so that's what I, that's what I meant. I mean, I'm referring to one specific Jewish lady, my therapist. Okay. That makes um, it, I honestly, yeah. I think that's helpful information. But then I, I like, I like what he said. He was like, suggest me a, um, a black male, therapist and i was like oh i get what you're saying but then also he's just gonna agree with you and we're not gonna get anywhere you're gonna go see a black male therapist and he's gonna be like yo before we start j cole's a pussy right fuck yeah son j cole a pussy <laughs> hey i'm really glad you're here um it's important that we do the work and i personally understand why culturally you'd want to find someone who has a similar background to you so we can relate so before yeah. we even start i just want to say off top fuck that <laughs> pussy j cole i also <laughs> removed his posters from my wall <laughs> fuck him fuck him fuck him this never is apologize beef. don't ever apologize oh, let's our starting ground no uh so we're, we're talking about doing a little a collabo with them uh this week to have the conversation because they did they do fundamentally see this in a way that i didn't see it like i actually do disagree also on some of these things but also props to j cole if j cole wanted out of this beef like he did it like it, well, he took you know he caught one great. little he caught a little stray he caught a little stray from drake yep he said i heard that cole shit that was weak whatever he took a little shot yeah. from drake a little, a little light, right. light tap yeah like tap, I got to give that to you. Uh, my guess is Kendrick leaves him out of it when he, whenever he strikes back. And now um, I don't hear anyone talking about Cole. Now everyone's talking about the rest of the shit, and Cole's but, like, I but told maybe, you I was out. Maybe Cole heard all this was coming and was like, let me, you know what? I don't want to be in all this messy shit. Why don't I step back? Oh, that's interesting. And then, and then Maul was calling him a hippie, or people, he said people call him a hippie. And it's like, okay, maybe he's a hippie. That's not a bad thing. Love hippies. It's not a bad thing at all, man. I think, I, I, I mean, listen, remember, black hippies. This is my therapy. To... This is my therapy. <laughs> you know, this is what, this is, I'm all, I'm going to tell you something, and I'll tell you in person when we meet up. I'm going to tell you something. Everyone who does not go to therapy thinks what they're doing is their version of therapy. No, 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 no. Maybe you're doing something helpful to yourself, but it, right. therapy is a very specific thing. Yeah, <laughs> Yo, I mean, music or, is or not maybe, therapy. No, no. Therapy is your therapy. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you this. I, I also want to say sometimes therapy like, just to be clear, if you try, because it's such an overused term, is like, it's not it's not a solve everything move. No. Like, I, I do have weeks of therapy where I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Oh, Honestly, no, 100%. Like, you you are going to have times when you're like, did this bitch do anything? What are did, we doing? Uh, you're not, uh, you're therapy, just I'll explain. There. I'll explain therapy to you. And what? Wait. And this is for... Wait, wait, wait. Can, can your well, therapy... Can your therapy help explain 
why we're avoiding talking about Mr. C going on 30 minutes? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yes. Keep going. I'll say this and then we'll talk about Mr. C. Therapy doesn't solve your problems. For me, therapy gives you tools, right? So this is what we call it. It's called my toolbox. When I went to therapy, there were zero tools in my toolbox. Now for the years I've gone to therapy, I now have tools in my toolbox. These tools help me go from two week depression to two hour depression. I'll feel mm -hmm. the depressed feelings and I'll start putting my tools into play and my depressed feelings, not always, I still have two week sessions, but very less frequently. And what I'll go, I'll, I'm feeling depressed or whatever the feelings are you have. And I'll be, oh, let me go into my toolbox, this, 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 and I'll get myself out of it a lot faster. For all the time you've spent around nerdy white people, the way you just said very less frequently was. Well, is that bad? It's so it's so wrong. It's so wrong. I can't even quite point out why it's so wrong. Is it irregardless? It's 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 beyond there. It's irregardless plus. It's like oh man, much le you say much less frequently. You can't say much, very much, less frequently. Very less fre frequently. Very less fre much. Yeah, much less. Much less much frequently. Less frequent. Yeah, I like yeah, very, very less, less frequently. No, listen, do what you got to do. <laughs> but um, no, that's a, I think that's a really good way of putting it because like I have days when I'm like. We're not doing anything. Or you know what annoys me? I hate starting in therapy. I hate being like, hey, because it's always on the phone these days for me. Hey, doctor. Hey. Sometimes I just want them to be like, so what's good? What's going on? Yeah. Like, yeah, I what's going like, on? Yeah. I, I have to always start being like, so this week, it, it feels yeah. so self-indulgent that I have yeah, to like yeah, start. Yeah. So back to me again. Um, yeah. So there are things about it that are weird and it's imperfect. Uh, for sure. But anyways, also, before so, we get to our conversation about <laughs> Mr. C, <laughs> I do need to tell all of you guys who are faithful one up, one up listeners, Cheap Heat, my Cheap Heat podcast is no longer with The Ringer and Spotify. Oh, it's a wrap. I'm out. Happened? So we it's couldn't good, work bad. it out. Oh. Well, you know what? At first, I didn't view it as good. And now that I'm excited to be launching it on my own, um, which is what I'm doing, at least in the temporary, it's exciting. So hmm. do me a favor. Go search for Cheap Heat, Cheap Heat with Peter Rosenberg, wherever you find podcasts. Now, when you search on the podcast, here's the fucked up part. It's going to bring up all these episodes of the Ring of Wrestling show because my podcast was hidden within the Ring of Wrestling show. So when you go to the Apple Podcast app and you first type in Cheap Heat, it's going to come up all those – it'll say top results, and it's going to show you a lot of Ringer Wrestling Show. If, it, if you don't see my shit, tap the little tab next to it where it says Shows, and you will see Cheap Heat with Peter Rosenberg. It's a black and orange logo. And, yeah, man, you know that feeling when you drop something new and we got everybody coming over who had not – you know, who was with us on the ringer because they all signed up at one scythe. It drove us to the top of the charts. It, it got me high off that validation again. I fell back. Nice. Nice. I, I went and checked one day. I was like, let me see if we even crack on Saturday. I was like, let me see if we crack the top um, 200. And we were way up there. Yo, bro, by the way, do you know who has a big ass podcast? Like a big Ooh. ass podcast. Who? Hala from formerly of Hot 97. Really? Yo, Hala's podcast is fucking big, dude. Like whoa, whoa, whoa. she 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 made a podcast called Young and Profiting with Hala Taha. And like when I first saw her posting about it, it was her like talking about like how to make it in digital and stuff, and I was kind of yeah. like but but how do you know? Yeah. And then like that, that was where my brain went. And then I kept watching yeah. I'm like I guess she knows. <laughs> she really does. <laughs> Yo, her podcast is rated 4.9. It has 3.4 thousand reviews. At this moment, when I looked at the top charts in all podcasts, because I was all hyped that mine was like number 30. Hers has been out for years, and she's sitting at the number 43 podcast. 
in all podcasts. Wow. It's fucking crazy. Right, right now, she's sitting here ahead of Ben Shapiro. So Shit. props props to Hala, who used to work with us at Hot 97. I did, I did reach out to her at some point, like, we should probably talk to you about how to do stuff because you seem Please. like you know what you're doing. So, Please. all right, we've 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 now delayed enough. If you want to hear us talk about Mr. C, you got to go over Patreon. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. Uh, although I, I think we will do more on Patreon and play some music on Patreon. Um, <clears throat> real quick, uh, before we continue with the podcast, I do, this is important, I do want to say today's episode is sponsored by our friends, Wait For It, Sife, over at Blue Chew, all right? Blue Chew, baby. Let's talk about sex. So if you remember the Finally. good old days? You remember the good old no. days when you were just no. ready to go? No, I have Alzheimer's. You don't even remember what it was like. I don't remember. Well, if you're trying to get in that time machine to what it used to be like, listen up. I'm talking about BlueChew.com. Um, listen, it's an amazing online service that gives you gives you the uh, same active ingredients as all those big ones that, you know, get you in, in into game shape but it's in mm -hmm. chewable tablets and it's a fraction of the cost you can take them anytime day or night you can plan ahead it's simple so go over to bluechew.com all right you consult with one of their licensed medical providers and once you're approved you receive the prescription within days and the best part it's all online no doctor's office no awkward conversation no waiting in line mm -hmm. at the pharmacy mm -hmm. all blue Chew's, uh tablets are made in the usa prepared and shipped directly to your door all right. So in a discreet to, in a in a discreet packaging. In discreet packaging. So nah. head over to bluechew.com right now. So happy. I love Blue Chew. Well, so you've been trying to find that, you know, that again. <laughs> and that's what you can that. find with Blue Chew. Yeah, a little. Um, all Yo, right. C died, man. Mr. C died, guys. Mr. And C it's, uh, been, died. It has been a little bit of a, a little bit of an adjustment period here. How are you feeling right now? Like six, five days into this. I'm madness? fine now. Are you like I've mourned? I've mourned. I've come to the realization. I've questioned and examined my own mortality. I've uh, gone through the the stages of what the what are we doing this for? Blah blah blah. I mean, when I got the news, here's something that's very um, well. First of all, Mrs. C, Calvin, uh, Calvin LeBron, LeBron, mm -hmm. LeBron. I don't even know how to say it, LeBron. Um, it's, it's LeBron. I don't know, I'm very young. LeBron. LeBron. Um, <laughs> for all those that are maybe young and don't know, Mrs. C, hip hop legend. Uh, was the DJ? Uh, it's funny because I always say he was the the DJ, Big Daddy Kane's DJ. But they were more partners. It was really a group. Mm -hmm. C and Kane were a group, but it it was just called Big Daddy Kane. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't yeah. just a hired help. He was like part of the organization. Um. So yeah. So great DJ, uh, for Big Daddy Kane. And then um, just a Brooklyn native, and then uh, gets the credit for discovering Biggie. Right? He didn't. He he says often he didn't discover Biggie. Biggie was brought to him by his friend uh, DJ Fifty, 50 Grand. Grand. But basically, Mr. C brought Diddy to Puff, which no. got him not, brought no. Biggie to Puff. Yeah, yeah, brought Biggie to Puff when he was at Uptown Records. Puff signed him to Uptown Records, um, and then and then Puff left, started his own label, Bad Boy Records. Mr. C on that first album is associate executive producer. So, like when you look at Wikipedia, those are the two big Mr. C credits, right? Um, the Where's Brooklyn at freestyle with Big Daddy Kane performing at Master Square Garden with Biggie and Tupac rhyme back to back. That was because of Mr. C. Mr. C invited them. Mr. C set up the recording, press record, had the tape. That was all because of Mr. C. And also, I think it's... um, I think I, I use the words to describe them like 50 Grand was, was Biggie's DJ. Yeah. 
C was the connector they needed. Yeah. C was the connector. You got to C was the one who was in the industry at that time. He yeah. already was making his way. He had done things. Yeah. Um, Mr. C, I've said this often. Mr. C is the first hip hop celebrity that I ever met. I was uh, interning at at WBAU at Adelphi University College Radio with Wildman Steven, DJ Riz. Mind you, Wildman Steven, DJ Riz, you know, they put me in the put me on, but I, they weren't that famous to me at the time. So Mr. C came by the. I think he had a. I forget he had an artist. Or something, he was bringing somebody up, and I met him. And I'm like, you know, this is 95, and we all know Mr. C from those Big Daddy Kane videos and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, he took a picture with me. I got to find that picture. And he's like the first hip-hop celebrity I ever met. And then later on became my brother, you know what I mean? I feel like he's such an iconic character in the history of this podcast too like he's one of the most referenced people on the show for sure and i was for sure i was hoping that somebody listening one of our hardcore one ep people would remember maybe episodes when he popped in because we'll right. i'll never know which one because he was there all the time when we were doing one ep so like we would we would record know. one ep at Hot 97 back in the day. So everybody who was at literally work at Hot 97 was, was always around. Yeah. But really, we would finish like, our morning literally. show and we would go start one up. So like so he, he was that. around. So I wonder if, you, if you're listening and you remember episodes he was on or he popped in on, please let us know so we can try to put together like a, a thing, a best of thing. If you tell us all the episodes, we can then tell Billy June and by his five-year anniversary, we can have an episode released <laughs> with all of those moments. Um, actually, Master Ace just reached out to me. Um, and here's the thing what's weird. So now me and Mr. C work together at um, 94.7 The Block here in New York City, right. a throwback station. Uh, my boy Skip and my boy Dre got me out of retirement. I do 10 a.m., to 2 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday on the block. And from 12 to 1 is the Mississippi throwback at noon. So here's the thing, though. So many people have been hitting me about Mr. C. And I realize they're hitting me thinking I'm the closest with him because we technically work together every day but here's the okay, secret of radio sense. here's the secret of radio nowadays guys mr c's mix is pre-recorded what about you you don't ever pre-record do you not pre-record so i don't want to make it a big deal i'm not trying to ruin the lore of radio but mr c's tuesday mix is recorded on a monday so you're so, saying you guys were not physically together that often. That's what people think, that they're hitting me like, yo, this is such a loss to you. And I'm like, bro, this is a loss yes. to you. It's the same oh, so loss. We saying, have the same loss. Oh, got it. So you're hearing from people who are dealing with it. You know they're on the same, exact same wage that, wave that you're on, but they think of it as different. They think of it as different for me because like we work together every day. Oh, got it. Right, right. And then Meanwhile, they're asking like, they because we work together every day, they're asking me for information. I don't have any information. I'm searching for info just like every every time I talk to my boss, I'm like, hey, what's up? Did you speak to the family? Did you speak to so what's the deal with this? What's the deal with that? You know what I mean? So it's, it's really um it, it it those first couple days, man. Yeah, oof. Isn't it crazy, though, that now we're so used to this level of, of death, it's so frequent, it feels like, yeah. that it really is like a faster sort of grieving period. Um, um, although, depending on when the service happens, obviously that can then take you right back there, you know, and then you're kind yeah, of back will. in it again. Yeah. Um. But what happened for me was I'm walking into the K-Show and Cass 1, Cass 1 hits the group checks 
and says, guys, I'm hearing C died. And I, I looked at my phone as I'm walking to my PD's office to talk before we go on the air. And I sit down. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. And I, and I say to the room, guys, my friend may have just died. And as I say that, I look at my phone and I see Cypher Sounds calling me. Keep in mind, we had just finished one app. Two hours. Yeah. First of all, Sife calling me anytime without just texting. A blind call is weird. Yeah. Doubly weird because we had just done one app. So I, the second I see now, Cypher Sounds is calling me. And I just like, well. And what, like, number, things, what number call you think you were? From what you? Number call, from me. From you. What number call you think I was? Wait, who? Oh, oh, wait. No, that I was from you? Yeah. I heard Mr. C died. And then, then I started making my call? calls. Who? What number you think you were? Man, I guess that really depends. Um, it depends on, on all who the you decided to call. I'm yeah, it depends on, on who you the... decided to call. Like, because like, you could have, I mean, because I would think, depending on what you think, who knows what, Flex would be your first call. But maybe you're like, oh, Flex already knows, or I don't want to be the one to call Flex. I don't know. Um, so I could be I could be anywhere between one and twenty. I don't know. Mm. Um mm. lower than twenty? No, 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 no. No. Oh god, that face it's in that tough. range. But like <laughs> who it is. How it ha like who, like just who it is? So, well, I would think you'd call Flex. I would think maybe you called Angie. For um, what? These are things you would do because you. No, like, I'm. I know. I'm trying to think of you. I, I don't know. I'm trying. To, like, I don't want to call anyone. You call. You call. Died. I don't well, want to call people and give them the news. Right, you're trying to avoid the news. Wait. Yeah. What about Didi? I bet you wonder if you call Didi the barber. No, not to um, check with Didi. So Didi the barber is my barber for many, many years, and he's been C's barber for the last uh, probably ten. I introduced Didi. Didi also cuts flex. From that, he beats a lot of people. Whatever. Uh, no, I didn't call Didi. I called Didi later on. He Didi gave me a, a lot of insight into C's situation. But why does your barber know. always know everything? You were number two. I don't know what number two. Number two. Who was one? Who was one? My brother Jamal. As a as a, the, I called Jamal for a couple of reasons. One, just my best friend, telling him about another friend that passed away. Right. Right. But also right. Jamal was down with us from early stress days and all the clubs and when flip when, squad when when all the when we tell those stories of C DJing club speed. Jamal was at the door. Jamal was at wow. the door back then. So, wow. So stuff like that. So I called him. I said, yo, C died, blah, blah, blah. And then I called my boy Peter Rosenberg um, because C meant so much to Juan Epp. The Juan and the Epp. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, then Big Dennis called me like... Uh, bro like crying broken up flex called me quick flex called me he goes are these rumors he, true ask, he wanted information he wanted information he calls me he, he doesn't even say hello are these rumors true i go from what i from what i'm hearing and then just silence silence, bro. silence. and he's like this is not good and i said no and i and i'm like flex you're the one that finds everything out all the time like Go find out. Like, stop talking to me. I don't have the info. Please go get the info. And then that's it. And then it um, and then my boss told me, because my boss is the one who told me. My boss told me this is not public. And then an hour later, I saw, I think Ted Smooth was the first Instagram I saw. Ted I, Smooth, I saw Ed Lover. Ted Smooth was the first one I saw. And then as soon as I saw that. It, that's it. It went. It went like fire. Then everybody started so, calling me. So, so I, the day before 
we that he passed the day before he passed i heard him do a mix he was playing last days by onyx and he jumped on was like i'm doing all onyx and then he played shut him down by onyx and he didn't sound right his voice didn't sound right and i i literally thought of i i consciously thought about it i was like hmm steve's voice doesn't sound right haven't heard him in a while it can't be that he sounds this different though he yeah, must be sick. sick like he doesn't yeah. sound right but like 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 then cold I'm, like cold sick like he's sick right yeah, now yeah, yeah. off like he's sick right now and then yeah i didn't go oh my god i'm worried he's he's in bad bad shape and then and then in retrospect his transition was sort of sloppy from last days to shut him down but like he does that sometimes like depending on the mix if he's getting it's not like see he's a brilliant he's one of the great djs i've ever known but it's not because on every mix he's blending every song perfectly That's he's not, not dj riz no, it's it's he hard DJs, to explain. He DJs with more energy than preciseness, even though he is very precise. He is, he, and he can be very... I think we'll, on Patreon, we'll go into more of the DJ nerdiness depth, yeah. I think. But I was like, it was. It felt a little off. And I was just like, didn't think much of it, but I haven't heard him. I'm never driving around at midday. Happened to be driving, and I heard him. And I almost videoed... I almost videoed listening to at siphon and C, but i was like oh, i don't want to fuck up my bluetooth whatever i didn't do it and um yeah then then this happened and now i'm feeling like in this moment a little bit like um it's hard to conjure up the emotion again i had so much of it uh, i had so many emotional moments on the air at hot we had a really um really emotional episode of the show and I did an interview for NPR where I got emotional doing the interview. It comes in waves. It comes in waves. But, but man, we, we man, we love that guy. Love that guy. Um, I had to. Um, I mean, I had to go on the radio the next day. Um. And 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 I'm not. You know me. I'm not good with death. I'm not good with harping on it and i had to do some kind of show man, tribute so i mean it was everyone knew already it was all over you know and i just dedicated my whole show to him on the radio and i just told cool stories I, every break i didn't do any little gossip things going on in the world i didn't do news every break i did was about mr c and times i've had with him significant times uh club speed days the tunnel hot 97 um just recently we had to do an event together that was hilarious um and then i also have some regrets c's been getting on me lately for well c keeps inviting me to some after work party he does but you can't you gotta you gotta you can't wear sneakers so i'm like see i'm never going there i don't own shoes he's like, put on some black tims i'm like see if it's a dress code it's not for me it's not for me. He's like, come on, come hang out. Show, like, let's show our faces together. Then he said, um, let's do an Instagram live. Let's do an Instagram live where we're talking about the show and the block and da-da-da-da. And I just kept pushing it off. Like, not, not on purpose, like, schedule-wise. It was like, oh, I'm not here this week. I'm not here. And I didn't fight for it to happen. And, um, yeah, I regret it now. I regret it. Um, and then, like, I don't know, like, is then you start feeling like can you have done anything? We I still don't know how he died or what he died from. I should say, I don't I know what he died from. Uh, the story I got from my boy Dee Dee was that because Mr. C would get a haircut Thursdays, three o'clock at Dee Dee's Barbershop, Fade to Famous in Brooklyn. I mean, don't even don't even try to get in Thursday three o'clock. C is there like clockwork. Thursdays, three o'clock. And if I want to go, C met my kids for the first time at Dee Dee's Barbershop Thursday, 3 o'clock. I, I said, I'm, let me run in there at 2. And I brought my kids with me because it was like a holiday or something. And he met my kids at that barbershop. That's how, you know what I mean? That's how, like, close Cause we you Because you knew, right, and you were just sure that he would be there. Oh, so for sure. Brought him by. For sure. 3 o'clock Thursday. Like, it's not even a question. And the funny thing is... I'll, sometimes I'm sitting there, I'll go Thursday, 2 o'clock, and Mr. C calls 
at 2.15 every single time. Didi, I'm on my way. And Didi goes, I know. <laughs> like, it's not like we know, see? Wow. We know. Um, so Didi told me he was in the barbershop that Thursday before, and he said he didn't look good. He said he didn't look good. See, uh, Didi said you should go to the doctor. And C was like, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And then, so usually C gets a cut at three and then leaves right away. And Didi said he didn't leave right away that day. He, he sat down in another chair for a little while and was like, kind of like dozing off. See, Didi was like, oh, he must be really tired. Maybe he doesn't feel well. And C said, I have a big party on Saturday. I'll go next week. And people, you heard about the party, right? No. People were saying, a lot of people say he didn't look good at the party. He was like sitting down sometimes while, <gasps> while he was DJing. Really? Yeah. Huh. But like C, like C's, C is <laughs> like the most reliable person. So C, they said, he told me, this is how his day goes. He wakes up at 11. He, you know, gets ready at 11, does all his regular people stuff. Thursday, I mean, at 12 o'clock, he listens to his mix from the block. Mm -hmm. So, like, bro, I'd be, I'd be on the block. I'd be on the block sometimes, and, like, maybe the commercial was a little longer than it should have, and his mix doesn't start till 12.03 or something. Bro, he calls me immediately. What's up with the mix? See, <laughs> everything's automated. I didn't press. I don't press the buttons. It's automated in the computer. Call the boss. Hangs up. Calls the boss. What's up with the mix? It's he's like, bro, the commercials started late. Like it's relax. So he listens from twelve to the to one. He mixes the next day's mix at one mm -hmm. to two. Two to two to five. He mixes his Rock the Bells um, Sirius XM show the, on LL Cool J's channel. So, so uh, one to two, so two to, no, two to four, right? Okay. Two to four, just two hours. Then after that, he starts preparing for the next day's mix. So this is every day, Monday, no, I guess it would be Sunday through Thursday. Sunday through Thursday, just doing the mix and then preparing for the next day. Cause see, if you don't know his mixes, he's very specific, very, um, uh, meticulous. It's, tailor it's tailor made to the day. Yes. This is the Monday version of the throwback at noon. This is the Wednesday version. Friday version is more energy, right? And if right. it's anyone's birthday anniversary of an album coming out, he doesn't do death days as much as he used to. He told me, he goes, I don't do death uh, days that much. Is that what he said? <laughs> we used to call him the king of the death mix. <laughs> Anybody's death day, he would have a mix for them. And um, anyone's birthday or any story that was relevant to an old school throwback record that was happening right now. Like if like I'm sure when Wu-Tang announced their residency in Vegas, he did a Wu set. You know what I mean? Anything that can connect to his throwbacks. So anyway, so now Master Ace is a really good friend of Mr. C. I, a lot. Like, I just got Master Ace's daughter tickets to see Pete Davidson. Mr. C called me. He's like, yo, you know this guy, Pete Davidson? I go, yeah, yeah. He goes, my goddaughter wants to go see him at the Beacon. So I said, okay, I set it up. And then he ended up canceling. But yeah, so like, that's like his, that's his goddaughter. Yeah, well, he's very so close with the, with the whole Lion team. Lachey, who's Mass Ace's wife, said on Monday she heard she felt something was wrong because Mr. C played an entire song. Talk about a bitch that knows you. <laughs> like, right. talk about someone who knows your style. Mr. C never plays a whole song. Never. Never. Oh, that's great. That's true love right there. Yeah, that's family. That's, That's family. real family. But um, so I was talking to Master Ace, and um, bro, we we got on the phone and we're like, You good? You good? We know, we know what it is. And then he asked me for something. He goes, Hey, I'm trying to reach so and so. 
do you have a, a connect for so-and-so? And I go, no, but Ace, do you know who I would call to get that connect every time? And he goes, C. Mr. C. Anytime you needed to, who would I have to? You know, you know, you know, from a one up standpoint, you know, the last thing Mr. C, I didn't even even tell you all that much about it, but the last thing Mr. C did with regard to one up was he was really trying to get KRS on one up. Yes. And he got, and he called KRS. He called his wife. He got me on text with KRS's wife. Yeah. We like made progress, but he took it as like a personal mission to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So now we really have to make it fucking happen. Um, C, just for people who don't know, C is the king of I'm calling you answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he, he texts All caps. Pleasantly. All caps. All caps. He texts I think pleasantly. C buys a phone. C buys a phone and tells the people, make sure this is never not in caps. I know he only he doesn't have a caps lock. He has to undo the caps lock. Um, now real quick before we do our Patreon, uh, I, I was, I was just sent this. I want to see if we can make it work. I don't know if I. <clears throat> Let me see if I can make it play. Can you, you make it play? Let's see. Tell me if you hear what I'm playing through right now. Hold on. Can you hear the following? Nothing. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's try something else. What if I try to drag it into here? Some no. What if I share my screen? Don't edit this out, Emilio. This is fun one ep suspense. This, well, this Don't is real. This There's real one ep suspense. What about this one? That's Uh, yeah. Uh. Out of my name, three times in front of your mirror. You hesitate to proceed after you reconsider. Lights flickered, the energy in the room shifted. Scared to open your eyes, cause you feeling the ghost of Kendrick. I dominated your favorite rapper, you idolized. My silence is enough to make Apologize, but track the statements cold, saying regret in his lyrics. MCs die when you revive a competitive spirit. How to kill a rapper, let them do it to they self. Self inflicted career wounds that fear helped. Drop nukes, surprise moves, hide and respect. They promised me my death, now they deleted threats. One rap dead laid on the floor, and I didn't even have to throw bullets for him to go. Now that we got that out of the way, it's one more to go. Stop wasting time, let's get the show on the road. He didn't even say anything. He called killed himself. That's kind of that's, that's tough. Now that it's direct, it's leaked distance from burner pages and all. It's a kill behavior for y'all call guards. I know that you were sensitive and emphasis on lame, seeking validation from rap critics, slandering names. Legacy forever cemented. I will reign. The next move, make your best move, is detrimental. Uh, grab your glocks when you see K Dot. Better call ghost riders just to beat K Dot. I came with a full click, but only need one shot. No big three, just dynamic. Uno K Dot. K Dot. So apparently, that's like a little, uh, that's like a teaser. Mm. You don't look impressed. It sounds just like the other ones. They all sound the same. What do you mean, though? Like, you know what? Let's go to Patreon. Let's go to Patreon. We'll talk more on Patreon. Patreon.com slash one up is life. We're going to go to Patreon. We love you guys. I know today was a little like erratic and all over the place, but it's kind of. Like, oh, today was a one up episode. Yeah. In other words, today was an episode of one up, the podcast one up. So about. we love you guys. Um, and we'll see you on Patreon. Patreon.com slash one up is life.